That's way too strong. I can't get it to focus. Yeah, probably turn the camera off. I've ruined this bit. Yeah, and that was the moment I realised I'd probably ruined that beer. Um, it was a HBC, Extra Special Bitter. Um, that video is from back in the spring. Um, however, regardless of that awful reading um, that showed my beer was way too strong, um, I decided to carry on with the brewing session and um, bottled it. And I'm glad to say that last week I tasted one of those bottles of beer and there's nothing wrong with it. It's not off. Uh, the flavours are fine from what I can tell so far. Really nice um, hop aromas coming off the beer. Um, and that's only sort of three weeks into its uh, conditioning. And now it's a month. Uh, it's, a, it's a Saturday morning. You'll probably see I'm quite tired. It's been a busy week. And I thought, you know what? The beer is coming out okay. There's all these horror stories on forums talking about, eh, if you get your temperatures wrong when you're mashing, you're going to ruin your beer, you're going to have all these unfermentable sugars. Um, however, I've done it wrong. I did the, the temperatures way too high because uh, that in that video I was using, that you're about to see, I was using equipment that I'd never used before, ever. And that made it much harder for me to understand temperatures in a mash and things like that. So what I've done is I've dug out some old videos um, of me putting that beer together from the spring um, and I can't find the first video. I may have deleted it but on this other computer screen here I can see what I was brewing was an HBC Extra Special Bitter. I bought it from the homebrew company .co.uk um, which is I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant brewing company. Uh, there's one more locally to me, which I'm going to use next time. Um, but because I was starting out for the first time brewing from the grain, um, I thought I may as well use this website. Um, the ingredients were um, Maris Otter malt, um, crystal malt, and caramalt. And I also had Challenger hops and East Kent Goldings. I have to say, if you're doing all grain for the first time, the brew in a bag method, which I use, but got slightly wrong, is a really good way to start out from what I can tell. Um, and I'm really looking forward to doing my next all grain beer and have it going a bit more smoothly. But you'll see from this video that I was sort of working things out for the first time. Um, I hope that it serves some sort of purpose. If you're trying all grain for the first time, perhaps you'll spot mistakes I made or I don't know. You're unlikely to spot mistakes I made. I don't think I really made any mistakes other than the temperature problem. But anyway, what I'm going to do is show the video to you now. Um, and if you do all grain brewing, really appreciate your comments underneath. Any advice you've got. Uh, there was one moment where I really, really struggled doing a fly sparge, which is when I got the grain out of the bucket and you meant to sparge with water to, to sort of get the last extract, the last goodness and sugars. Um, out of the grain, really struggled with that bit because of the weight of the grain, because of where I positioned the bucket, uh, slash boiler, etc, etc. So, really appreciate your comments. Putting this video up, um, out into the wilderness, uh, and yes, looking forward to getting to your feedback. Just so you know, I've also got lined up another video which I'll upload separately which is me tasting the Woodford's Wherry, which is a beer kit which I posted about, I can't even remember how many weeks ago, a few weeks ago, about maybe a couple of months, can't remember. But that, anyway, that beer is now amazing. So, I'm going to do a little bit of a taste test for you on that beer too, at some point. But anyway, on with the video. I forgot to mention at the start of the video that absolutely everything is being sanitised before I used it. Um, what I'm doing is this bucket's still on the boil, so 29 degrees. Um, so not too far off now. As I said, waiting to get to that 70 degree mark. But I've sanitised everything in here as well. So I'm literally just going to leave the sanitizer like this. I mean, the last time I used this brew or well, this fermenting bucket was um, for a Cooper's English bitter um, so the smell of this really kind of ingrained into the plastic but the bucket itself is clean anyway 
Right, my camera assistant is gone, so what I've done is I've put the camera on top of the coffee machine, but that's fine. So, what's happening now is the water is 66 degrees. Um, I can't, you have to believe me, I can't show you that because the wire's not long enough on the thermometer, but it's um, 66 degrees. As soon as it gets to 70 degrees, I'm going to add my grain, and then I have to try to keep a temperature between 65 to 69 for the mash. So, it's all going straight into the bag that you saw earlier. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the camera there, um, add the grain in, make sure there's no lumps, they call them dough balls, so I'll stir it a little bit. Um, and then for this recipe I need to leave um, everything mashing for an hour between those temperature ranges I said. Um, it's a completely new bucket system thing I've got here, I've never used it before. Um, it's just plastic, so I imagine it's not that well insulated. However, because I've got a heating element on this, um, I can just switch the heating elements off uh, and on <laughs> as many times as I need uh, to keep a constant temperature. So there we have it, so 68 degrees now, so in a moment I'll turn the temperature off and add my grains. What I've done is I've also, as you saw earlier, sanitised everything, so I've got my spoon. Uh, and the spoon will, you know, I'll just mix everything up with this. Fun times. So, mashing process, so I've lost quite a lot of heat um, through doing that mash, so I've got 64 degrees, so um, it's cooler than I wanted it, uh, it needs to be between 65 and 69, so what I've done is, because I'm lucky enough to be doing this directly in the boiler, is I've just whacked the heating elements on, and hopefully there's no grain touching the element, which I don't think there is. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done, I've put the element back on. Cheers. First rule of home brewing. Whenever you brew, you drink a home brew. This is the uh, Cooper's English Bitter. Sorry, I'm kneeling down because I've laid the camera down on the coffee machine. Cooper's English Bitter. Not a bad head on that. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been in bottles now for three weeks. And, uh, you know, head is going away. It's not a bad beer, this. Really nice flavour. Tried this two weeks ago and it was incredibly bitter. Like, I was worried because uh, the Cooper's English Bitter Kits are meant to be very, very good. I'm um, sorry, I should have said, I didn't just do a kit with this. I, I got the Cooper's English Bitter Kit. I got, uh, how many grams was it? 500 grams of um, dry medium uh, malt extract. And then I also added a kilogram of dextrose to it. So it came out at about 4.6, something like that. Really good bit. And very cheap, you know, calculates at like 50 pence a pint, something like that. And not bad. Very good. Now, <clears throat> mash progress. It's been about 15 minutes and I've had to keep the heating elements on, weirdly enough. I, I sort of thought it would only lose about 3 degrees with adding the grain, but actually added a lot more. Probably because I had to stir it longer than I wanted to. Um, it's at 66 degrees at the moment, the elements still on. Optimum temperature for the grain is about 67 for this one. So, um, 
when we get to about 67, uh, 68, I'll probably turn the element off and um, see how well the temperature is being held. Um, I mean, the lid's pretty much sealed. It's got a hole for the thermometer, but that's about it. But um, for the moment, I'm just going to drink my beer and wait. Okay, so it's now been an hour. Um, annoyingly found out I did my mash way too hot. Um, new kit and everything, the um, boiler went on, the grain was stopping the heat from rising, and so I did a stir. Um, the highest temperature reading I got was about 81 degrees. Um, I stirred it, added ice, I got the water down to 75 degrees, which really is having read online. The highest temperature I want for this. Um, Despite that, the wort water tastes um, or wort tastes sweet. Um, I don't know how the beer's going to come out, but we're going to carry on as usual because I've got the whole kit here, and we'll see what happens. Um, so, because I add some cold water to all of this, what I'm going to do is actually um, get rid of the sanitizer in my fermenting bucket and recirculate the water rather than heating new um, sparge water up. So, we'll see how this all turns out. Let's have my take. Second eclipse off the bag, gonna move out of the way, messy kitchen. So, at this point I attempted to do a fly sparge, uh, it just didn't work, um, there was way too much grain, I didn't have the right equipment, I couldn't do the sparge, so rather than show you about half an hour's worth, probably an exaggeration there, probably five minutes worth of me struggling with this bit, I did not do the fly sparge, not properly anyway. Um, so there we have it, on with the rest of the video, but you're meant to do a fly sparge, you don't have to, but you're meant to. So very close to boiling point now. So at this point, as I've read, it's good to have your spoon ready so you can make sure it doesn't boil over at any point. break these off a bit. Got a choice, you can either add these to a bag in, but because I don't have any bags today, they're going straight in. So these are on for an hour. Sometimes they can froth up when you add, so I'll make sure they're stirred in. Be careful you don't splash yourself because this is 100 degrees. Oh, and there's an amazing smell coming off that. If it was smell of vision you need to be able to smell it, but it's not. So I've just added in my second edition of hops. Um, now what I'm going to do is get... Ah, and uh, by the way, before I get the World Flock tablet, this is what we're going to be doing with the grains. So we're going to make them into dog biscuits and use them for chicken feed, etc. You can use them in granola bars apparently. Anyway, well flocked tablet and expertly done. Boop. And it's in. I'm just gonna stir it a bit. I'm gonna be careful I don't burn myself. This is rather hot. So that tablet should mean the final beer is a bit clearer. We'll see. As you see, I'm using leaf hops. For this. So that's that addition. The final hop addition is at down there. So it's been boiling for almost an hour now. So what I've got is a wall chiller. Now if you're trying to go and do all grain I'll definitely get one of these because trying to cool down liquid without a wall chiller is very difficult. So what I'm going to do um, is place this into the wall whilst it's still boiling very carefully because it's hot, hot, hot. The reason I'm doing that now is because I want to make sure that it's completely sanitised. I did clean it earlier, but just to be extra safe. 
I'm going to do that. Um, I plug this into the tap so we're ready to go. A bit of a kink there will sort out once we get going. Um, like that. And um, rather than just sticking this into the sink, um, what I'm actually going to do is stick it into my fermenting vessel, my FD. Because, whoop, all over the floor. Because I could sanitise this earlier, but the sanitizer I've used needs cleaning out the water first, so I thought I may as well just put the water straight into there. Also, if you haven't seen one of these before, the way it works is you whack the cold tap on, goes through the hose, through the water chiller, makes it cold, cools the liquid down. I'll be cooling this liquid down to about 20 degrees. Um, I don't know how long that's going to take. Again, you know, this is a completely new setup for me before. I've never done all grain before. Um, I don't even know how the beer will be as I did it at a way too high temperature. Mixed reviews online, but the only way you can tell is by tasting it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So it's been boiling for an hour now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the heating element off. These last hops are zero minutes, so in other words, they're flame out. So what I'm going to do is dump these in now. As said before, you could put them in the bag if you wanted to. Now, it's very difficult for me at this stage because I'm so new to brewing, um, telling which hops are which, but I think these do, do smell a bit different. So, I'm just going to stir them slightly. They're added in. So the way this works is that the other two hops are probably more for bittering because these are added in on the flame out. I'll add more aroma. Have I had literally no idea what sort of hops they are? So it's been about 15 minutes now, and the temperature is 29, 28 degrees. So working really well. I've stirred it as well. Got lots of aeration in there. If you just move the camera above, you can see. You know, basically looks like wool. Because it is. I won't get some leaves off there. So, quite a few of the leaf hops hanging around. What I want to do now is take a little bit of a gravity reading because I want to find out just how strong this beer might be. That's way too strong. I can't get it to focus. Yeah, probably turn the camera off. I've ruined this beer. <laughs> 